Welcome. I'm Peter Pye, President of Corbon. Over the years, we've been getting a, we get a lot of phone calls and requests over the internet and on our website and, and calls at our factory saying, hey, what exactly is the difference between your four product lines? As you all know, uh, Corbon and Glazer uh, make four different product lines. We have our Glazer Safety Slug, um, our conventional jacketed hollow points, our Powerball ammunition, and our DPX. With me today is uh, Mike Shovel, National Sales Manager for Corbin Glazer. And Mike, I uh, uh, would like to tell you a little bit about the differences in our four product lines, starting from the less penetrative loads to the, mo the most penetrative loads. Mike, can you explain that to our viewers? Sure. The Glazer Safety Slug was actually invented in 1974 for the Air Marshals program. They were looking for something that wouldn't penetrate a body and go through a fuselage of a plane. So what they came up with was a, a bullet jacket with a compressed load of shot in it, capped off with a polymer ball, and then they crimp it in there. And what it does, it feeds real well because it's got a round nose profile, and the, the performance of it actually is designed to penetrate, depending on the caliber, it'll penetrate between five and 10 inches in soft tissue. And generally the results are this, you'll get jacket shards and a couple of pellets uh, stray pellets, but it's compressed load of, of very fine shot, and each of those components is, uh, we're looking for performance that may be tearing a blood vessel or hitting a major organ and causing some, some uh, commotion in the body to make it shut down. And our ballistic gelatins, that shots, like you can see them on YouTube or on our website, as the, as the round enters uh, the body cavity after going to, through two layers of denim, or four layers of denim, they actually, uh, the, the jacket ruptures and showing, and, and it just, it, all the shot comes out. Shot gets dispersed throughout a, a, an area, whatever the temporary stretch cavity would be. That could be mm -hmm. three inches for a small caliber, it could be five, six, seven inches for a larger caliber. And, and all that tissue is now damaged. And what we're looking for is, is a very fast uh, stop for a person to stop doing what they're doing. So then uh, Glazer uh, is our least penetrative round uh, moving up then, Mike, up the ladder in, in as far as depth of penetration and, uh, and wounding would be our conventional hollow point. Right. Our traditional jacket of hollow point is just that. It's a, ja it's a bullet jacket with a, a lead core formed into a good hollow point that's going to vir virtually guarantee expansion. What we're looking for with this is super high velocity and the maximum tissue damage. And the penetration on this is going to be anywhere from uh, seven inches for a subcaliber to 14 or 15 inches for a large caliber. And what we're looking for actually in, in dynamics of a duty type load would be 12 to 18 inches of penetration. So we're right in the ballpark with that one. And it's, it's designed, again, once again, for maximum tissue damage in the first seven, eight, nine inches of, a, of, a, of the tissue. And then after that, it penetrates and tears the, the uh, remaining tissue and, and destroys it, causing uh, lots of bleeding. You know, uh, our jacketed hollow point, what we like to call our conventional hollow points, were actually the, the original line of Corbon back in 1982. This is the line that basically put us on the map, our, our high velocity hollow points, they wouldn't get plugged up with clothing. And, uh, and the key to having a hollow point not plugging up with clothing would be actually to have uh, a very high velocity. The conventional hollow points are a, are a great thing. Unfortunately, in order to get a, a, these hollow points to expand uh, very well and expand dramatically, they've got to have a large hollow point. And some guns just plain won't feed these wide mouth hollow points, uh, 1911s of course being one. Uh, they were designed in 1911 for full metal jacketed bullets or round nose bullets and they just couldn't, uh, uh, it would take a lot of gunsmithing let's say to, to get them to feed 100% with uh, a, a wide mouth hollow point. And that is why we came out with the Powerball. Mike, when it, and you can go in and, and, and tell everybody uh, the dynamics of the Powerball, you know, what makes it work, but uh, the original uh, reason that we came out with the Powerball was initial for, for good feeding. To alleviate feed problems with, with certain pistols, right. Now the Powerball is a, is a conventional jack of the hollow point bullet with a polymer ball crimped in the end of it. So it gives it the feed profile hardball, which is going to make it feed well in, in any, any auto pistol out there, but it gives it the performance of a good hollow point. It's a lightweight projectile for each caliber going at, at a, an extremely high speed. 
which gives it the uh, pretty much a guarantee that it's going to expand. Now, this the the what we didn't understand about putting the ball in the jack of the hollow point was how it was going to change your performance in tissue. What it does is it slows the expansion down just a shade, and instead of going in and fragmenting or rapidly expanding, it slows down the expansion, makes it a more controlled expansion round, which gives you excellent expansion. You can see by the recovered diameter of the bullet, along with deeper penetration than our jack of the hollow point. So you're getting pretty much, we're getting into the best of both worlds here. See, a lot of people, I guess, think, Mike, that, that the ball is actually to enhance expansion, and, and that's kind of a, a misconception. The ball is actually to delay expansion. Right, and makes it ex controlled expansion. And, and, and it actually, it's actually getting into the gelatin blocker in the tissue uh, about two inches deeper before it actually starts to open up. Right. And I think we got on, on high-speed film, going through gelatin, we actually show that the, the ball actually compresses into the back of the hollow point and, uh, and then actually bounces out of the way exposing the, the, uh, the big hollow point cavity and that's what actually gets the, starts to get the bullet to expand. So the, the ball actually doesn't help expansion but actually helps delay expansion. Right. Then from there we went on and uh, the big complaint about our company was that you know our ammunition didn't get enough penetration. They were, they were concerned that uh, some of our loads only got 9, 10, 11 inches of penetration and the uh, FBI's protocol calls for between 12 and 18 inches of penetration in soft tissue. So what we decided was we were going to come up with a, a new round for a defensive, new defensive load that is uh, the DPX load. uses a solid copper hollow point. And what we realized after we started uh, experimenting with this was this literally gives you the best of both worlds. You get rapid, violent expansion, high velocity, along with the deep penetration. So you get the deep expansion of the heavyweight bullet, with the rapid expansion of a lightweight bullet, you've got a, the lighter weight projectile gives you faster recovery time between shots because the recoil is not so severe. This is, this really is the ultimate defensive load. It gives you everything you could possibly want. It gives you expansion, reliable expansion, consistent expansion, deep penetration, less recoil, faster follow-up shots, and excellent terminal performance. And they're lead free. And they're lead free, that's exactly right. The DPX actually stands for Deep Penetrating Expanding Bullet. So it's a, it's a solid copper bullet that expands, uh, yet penetrates deep. As you can see from this recovered bullet, you can actually see this was, bullet was actually fired through four layers of, of denim following the FBI protocol. And the, the bullets will expand, and, and you can see the, 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 um, the denim in there and, and still penetrate as the, the pedals actually fold back and allows for deeper penetration. The, the other concept about DPX we didn't understand until we got into experimenting with it was how it perform on heavy barriers. Uh, automobile windshields, automobile steel, the DPX penetrates all the hard barriers way better than any copper lead combination. Copper is a hard material, it stays together and the lead is a soft material. When you shoot lead through a, a windshield or a, a car door, the steel and the glass will we'll, uh, shred some of the weight off and you end up with a less than ideal bullet weight. With the DPX loads we found is that you get 100% weight retention along with excellent penetration and expansion even after going through a heavy barrier. In closing, I just want to go over again, Glazer Safety Slug, the least penetrative. Going up the ladder then is our conventional jacket, a hollow point. Our power ball gives you a little bit more penetration than the hollow point and then our deep penetrating expanding bullet which is going to give you the most penetration. Thank you very much. Like I said, I'm Peter Pye, President of Corbon, Mike Shovel, National Sales Manager.